Hi, my name is Stephanie Lester, and today we are creating Jemima Puddle Duck from a needle felting kit by the Crafty Kit Company. Welcome to my studio, I'm Stephanie Lester and I'm a fibre artist and today we are going to be going through the Jemima Puddle Duck um, kit, needle felting kit from the Crafty Kit Company. Oh, looks like Milo, my little cat has just joined us as well. Nice. So I am the designer of the um, kit and thought it might be worth going through um, a summary of the kit and perhaps some tips and areas where um, perhaps written instructions would benefit from a video just to show how to do certain items. This is not going to be a felt along video like I sometimes do. I think that the majority of the people which will um, come to this kit will know a certain amount about needle felting. Of course, if you are a beginner, and you've just jumped straight in because you love Jemima Potter Luck or the Beatrix Potter characters, then um, hopefully there's enough instructions for you to get going. Oh, look at Milo's going to get in a cupboard, bless him. Um, but if you actually need some more help, then by all means ask. Um, you can put comments in the um, video below <coughs> and I can easily pop on and show you something if there's something, a little technique that I've mentioned and you're not familiar with it and I can always pop on and show you that in a separate video um, or you can come along to my Facebook group which is Two Teaks Tips and Tutorials and ask in there um, and I could even um, pop on and do something there. So, but I have to say, I've assumed that the majority of you don't really want me to go through in detail, you know, for the however many hours it will take to complete and perhaps if I just go through the summary of it um, and the sections and go through a few bits in detail. Okay, hopefully I will pick out the bits that you need. So, let's have a little look at uh, Jemima to start with. Here she is. I love Jemima Puddle Duck. Okay, so she's very much designed so that um, when she's sitting she's got her two um, feet and her rather large posterior which actually she will stand up on let me get that forward there we go um, and she balances on those okay pop her there right so really the sections can be split up into the initial getting started with uh, the armature and the body now the armature really is a very basic armature it's just so that we can get that lovely neck um, going all the way down and it gives us something to actually create that shape around but this is really it's the neck that we want to make sure we can get and bend into position etc we will have um, wire for the feet as well but that is not actually going to be attached to this particular armature okay so um, I will just take us through a few bits on that because it's worth, as we go, mentioning that you know this is actually going to be a part of the beak, and so it's important to have that little hoop at the front. That will be the bottom part of the beak because you'll be putting a piece on top, which will create the top. Um, yep, and so you know the wrapping of wall around the body to build up and adding of what I oh Milo's actually been in the cupboard. <laughs> bless him um i get so easily distracted um so we create little cushions um of wool to add to sort of like pad out for instance you know our um in fact what i'll do is i'll take her little um bonnet off because that's one of the nice things about this is we can actually undo 
the little bonnet and take it off. Even if, or just loosen it up a bit and take it off. She says, come on. Oh yeah, just undo the bow. Might help, might in it. There we go. Right, there. So we can look at her now. So yeah, so she has, you know, a nice, so is that a gullet? Anyway, it's that neck shape that we have coming down and she has a rather uh, belly and, and then she has her underbelly which um, you know produce the eggs. So we have nice areas to pad out and obviously shape-wise she's nicely out here and thinner down the back. So the easiest way to build up the shape is to actually add it on rather than you know keep wrapping it round. It's nice to actually get nice little cushions and place them where you need and then do an overall wrap around. Um, it explains that in the instructions, but if you've not done that before um, and it says create a cushion, you might think, do what? <laughs> so I will just show you briefly how to do that. Now we can actually see here, and I'm saying about the armature, that little um, hoop that we create there is actually this lower part of the beak and we create um, a piece on the mat which we wrap over for the top part so that's why it's quite important to have that little hoop at the front so that we can do that okay great so yeah the feet themselves let me see if I can um, grab a pair or even one I think I've got yes okay we've got so this is the armature for the feet okay and the instructions take you through that again um, if you've never normally you might have made feet if you've done a bird before but they'll be smaller than this because this time we're doing webbed feet often when we've done them for robins and things we'll just wrap around the wire and even allow for you know the claw at the end but this time we're actually going to be felting between them to create the webbed feet that we've got here, obviously. Um, we've got half a, half a foot here, which I kind of started and then you felt in between. But the reason why I've got these prongs here is that so that's how you can attach it nice and easy to the body. And, you know, you can actually create the armature with these attached and it's all connected before you go. The reason why I like doing it this way for this one is that once that you've created your shape and um, in all her glory, you can then decide exactly where you actually want to have those feet. So obviously it either side in the middle and then you add a bit more um, fluff, wool over the top to felt it into place but it just means you can place it exactly where you want to place it rather than hoping you've got it right to start with. Okay the next um, area I have on my list is the beak and as I say we have the armature which we will have um, felted around to get that bottom piece and then we'll create a separate piece which will lay over the top and felt into position. So I'll just go over that. Um, and I think that that's pretty um, self-explanatory and okay with the diagram, but I'll just mention it when we get there. Um, okay, and then we get the fringe, a delightful fringe, which really makes the shawl um, on lovely Jemima. So, we basically make a couple of little um, semicircles for the edges of the shawl and put the detail of the fringing on, which is very simple to do, and then just felt it into place. Um, and then we create the folds and add just by adding the wool on top. Okay. Um, the bonnet, yes, so the bonnet is nice and separate. And the nice thing is you can actually take the bonnet off um, and this once again is done all with felting ourselves flat onto um, your mat and creating the piece so that it's got that nice really 
flimsy material effect. And the claws, yes, yeah, so um, at the moment, our little Jemima here, she just has the hoop that we create when we very first do the brush. Yes, I think you can see that. Um, we'll be able to see better when I go to the overhead. And if we clip the bottom bit and put it out, you've then got nice little claws, which not only um, sort of is an element of realism there, but also it helps to clutch onto wherever she's standing, which makes her a little bit more stable. And that's always good with any of your sculptures that you make. Okay, so those are the areas I'm going to go through. Um, just, you know, briefly with the techniques and things. And as I say, if you need to know anything else, then please do ask below or come into uh, my group or even the Crafty Kit Company group, which is called Craft Your Way to Happiness. Okay, so we will go to the overhead. Okay, so here we are on the overhead. Um, hopefully you can see I'm here in the top right corner so I can still talk to you if I need to explain something rather than just focusing um, down on my hands. Right, so we've got the instructions here. As always, it's as well to read through all of the instructions before you start so that, like I did there where I went through the major parts and just check the different areas because if there's something that you really haven't done before you might want to then check on this video um, and see if we've gone into detail or even one of the other videos we've done for one of the other kits i mean certainly for the feet we've done um the little chick video and also a separate feet one as well if you wanted to go and practice some other smaller feet before you actually got into that anyway so yeah just check through you've got everything um as listed and off we go basically now if you've um followed any of my um designs before you'll know that when it comes when we start to deal with the wall i always divide the wall up because i just think it's a really good idea to make sure at the start that you've got the um proportions right as in how much you know, you're going to put on the body and the head and things so i do actually um explain the percentages, um, fractions that you want to put apart. Obviously, if you're someone and you actually have a big stash of wool and you're going to use that as well on top of the kit, you don't need to worry. But if you're using just the kit wool, it's as well to follow those to make sure you've got the right amount of wool. Okay. Okay, so um, as I say, starting off first of all with the armature. And if Measure first of all and make sure that the piece that you've got is 70 centimetres. Um, so, because you're going to bend it in half, um, and as we've done here, you're going to make sure that, that you have a loop at the end so that you can then squish it and make it for the beak. Um, and different people do this in different ways. If you struggle with manipulating something like wire, you know, squeezing it and um, pushing it in, then a pair of pliers are perfect. For, and sometimes two pairs of pliers, so you can hold one end with the pliers and twist with the other end with the pliers. So I'm just going to say some basics here. So, um, yeah, to start off with, we want to, let's put that over here, so it keeps, um, focusing in and out so we want to make sure we actually have a loop at the end um, don't worry about the shape too much but we will squish it so that it's kind of like this shape when we've finished okay and um, it's worth mentioning in fact i'm going to just do it that way because when i do it with my right hand like i'm doing here i like to have it going out rather than pulling it in um, in fact, if I did it left-handed, would that be the same? Yes, I'd like to do it out. So whichever way, whichever way is for you, but I like to roll it out. It's also worth mentioning that what you don't want to do is wrap one wire around the other. What that would be would be you'd have a straight wire and you'd just be wrapping it down. Let's get this focus right again. There we go. Um, the reason being is that's not as strong. Okay, the strongest way is when you've got equal wrapping. So when I'm going round 
I'm making sure that they're both going round each other and I'm not just going round. So you actually get, I mean, it won't be completely even, but you at least get, you know, what appears to be a rhythm and a pattern. And I think, yeah, if you go inside and do it, you've got probably a better chance of doing that. And you're just going to take that all the way down to the bottom until you actually have it completely. As you can see here, it's not even all the way down. And then you are going to shape it. Now, <clears throat> you just need to, as I did here for this one, you can see this is the shape that you're going for. It doesn't need to be exact at the moment because you're still going to be shaping around whether this wire is lower or higher doesn't really matter that much because you're going to be wrapping um, the wool around it and shaping it as you go. But you do need to get that bit for the beak and around for the neck and down. So, and this will just finish around about where your tail will be. Okay, so that is the shape we're going for. Great. And the next step is to wrap the pipe cleaner around the length of the armature. And the reason for that is just it helps to grab onto the wall when you're wrapping the wall around and felting it in. Okay. Now I, when I did it, sort of just did a little bit around the top. Didn't worry too much about that, but just grabbed onto here like so. Just really grab that round. So it was attached and then just wrap nicely round and round all the way down. Okay. And as I say, it's there just as a grabber for the wall. As I say, I recommend that you divide the wall um, as per the instructions, just so that you make sure you've got the right amount when you get to the different stages. But let me, just in case you've never done um, wire wrapping, if this is the first armature you have ever done, let me just um, briefly show you. So you need to take off a thinnish piece. You don't need masses at this point because you are just starting off the wrapping process. Okay. And so I would myself just take a bit through um, this little hoop at the end. So let's caught that in and then start wrapping. Okay, so wrapping. Don't pull from here because if you pull from here you will actually split the wall. So if you wrap and keep it tight to the actual wrapping, here we go, then you can pull it really quite tight in place and the pipe cleaner will grab the wall. Okay. If you are worried, if you feel that you're not um, wrapping tightly at any stage, just grab yourself one of the needles, okay, and just do a little felt in place, which it, you can felt wall to wall into the pipe cleaner, however you want, just to make yourself feel more confident with your wrap, okay? Especially if it's your first time, sometimes it just makes you feel like you've got it covered. Now I'm here wrapping around like that. Now you might find it easier to twirl the armature around rather than you wrapping around. That will be personal to you and whatever you do is the right thing. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end here. Because I didn't um, wrap my pipe cleaner very well, I came to the end. I should have loosened it more at the top and come down, but I won't worry about that. Just tap that in at the end, okay? And so I'll do um, another piece down the bottom, tidy it up, 
just around the top just so that I've got a nice um, beak but that's how you start the wrapping okay okay so steps five and six show you the shapes that you need to be producing and so just to show you when you're doing those shapes with the wrapping once again you are still taking small pieces but when you need to fill up so for instance the neck we can just or the head I should say not the neck at the moment you can just fold those bits around and then bring that a little bit down the neck okay and then you can just use your needle to cut those pieces and adjust the shape as you want it's just good to get those shapes in because even if it's actually quite flimsy once you've got the shape you can add more wool around the outside and actually um, condense it more and toughen it up okay um, and obviously there's that kind of seahorse-ness in terms of adding the bit for the gullet is it the neck part um, and then adding cushions for the side for 7a and 7b so I just want to show you that when you add those extra bits when I say making cushions it's just about taking a piece of the wall however big you want to make your piece and just folding it up so that you've got a little cushion okay and that just means that you can add it you know you can felt that into the top and then you could felt that into the bottom and before you know it you've actually got a nice shape there for that neck area um, and once you've done this in all the different areas, you can then just take a thin piece of wool and wrap it all around and felt it just to bring it all together. But when um, it explains it for the doing it underneath and doing the sides, these are the cushions that we're talking about. And they're just a really great way of building up the shape. Okay, so feet. Um, Probably got a nice um, body. Hope you know, probably nicer shape than this because I have um, done this rather quickly. But anyway, um, close enough for jazz, as they say. Um, the feet. So as you can see from our little booklet here, what we're going to do is we're going to produce these, and we're going to produce them in two sections: a left and a right. So produce the foot, create the structure. And put them together and this is how it's going to attach into our body with a nice stable then and for our beautiful Jemima to sit on and then also her bottom will actually fit nicely okay so we've got them quite wide at the moment a bit extreme okay so how we're going to do this so get yourself a piece of card now i often use business cards when i'm doing little templates for the feet now i can't actually remember what did i actually say the um three and a half centimeters okay so three and a half centimeters so what you're doing is you're starting with a folded piece and you've got two of these so you're doing it twice left and a right foot and you start with it over like that in the middle and then you take one of these and wrap it round and then you take the other one and wrap it round so that you basically then have three points which are going to be your three points of your feet okay brilliant then you can just i say just sometimes it takes a little bit of um scraping along to take it out so that you then have your one two three now this bit i it's up to you how you do this bit but basically you are going to twist each one individually so you've got three toes 
and then you use the end bits to come back up for the stalk. So you twist them three toes and then you've got the rest of it and you come back up. I find that it's neater if I take this wire and put it over there. Okay, bring that in. And then just take this wire underneath and put it through there. Just so these bits are nicely then sort of connected, let's say. Right. Now, once again, if you struggle with the um, holding and twisting of the wires, then use pliers. Put a set of pliers here and then another set of pliers here so that you can then twist. If you're fine with twisting, because these are quite thin wires and you might be able to do it. But if not, hold there with your pliers and then just get a nice twist close to the join. Okay. Those ones back in, get that round so that you've got a good start. A little flower now, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, and then just twist these until you get a nice little loop. And we leave the loop there and we work on them with the loop and only actually change it at the end and cut it to a claw if that's what you want to do at the end. Okay. So just, I'll just do the one with you. There you go, one, and then do the other ones. Right, so um, once you've done those three, then you've got your two strands coming up so you can just then twist those up to how far do we say she says looking at the instructions okay to form the leg for three and a half centimeters so you go up three and a half centimeters in that twist again but as I say it doesn't need to be you can see my bits there it doesn't have to be the neatest little connection it just needs to be strong so that's why i um I say move these around as i did just so that i've got a nice strong connection there and these bits aren't sort of trying to come apart or fighting with each other okay so yeah we just go up for three and a half centimeters and then split the two ends leaving one pointing up and the other one coming up out at right angles Okay, so we can do that and then move on to wrapping the toes in the lovely yellow wool. So it's worth mentioning that once you've actually gone up by two centimetres and come back down again and got your two bits up the side, you need to make yourself a left and right one. So you do the next one with obviously the wires coming out this way so that you can join them up in the centre. Okay. So wrapping the toes is the way we're going to start here. We're going to start by wrapping the toes and then wrapping back up the leg, okay? So the important thing is to have a quite thin piece and to have it so that it's ribbon-like rather than um, string-like. So don't sort of like twist it into what will be um, a string. You need it nice and flat so that you can wrap the, the well, are they toes? They're probably toes, aren't they? Okay, so start here, and what you're going to do is go down and go back. You're not going to finish out at the claw. So we go down, wrapping as we go, and when you get to the end, you, oh, see, I caught that on that toe there. Let's move that out of the way. 
okay and then we wrap back so that's why it's quite important that you don't have a really thick strand you have a nice thin strand that you're bringing up and down that toe until you get it back there now sometimes i like to just felt that end in there so that it doesn't unravel before i've done the other two and join it all up okay so there we go that's pretty much it in place we do the other two and then bring the ends together and come back up the leg but as i say the important thing is keep it thin ribbon like wrap down wrap back up and if you need to felt more than that to actually keep it in place then do do what you need to do so yeah you just then obviously fill in the gaps by using your wool which by laying it out I'm just going to use this one here and um, as you can see in the pages um, you know it really is just a case of lying your felted pieces on the top and felting it down so that you've then got that held in place and and then folding it over and felting it in place again and it doesn't matter how thick or thin it is really because um, their web feet are quite thick but you just need to make sure you still have the ridges and as long as when you've actually felted the webbing in place you actually felt down either side of the wire you'll get that and you'll get the effect on both of them which is grand so I will just mention the bit when you attach it because once you've then taken the wall up the legs obviously not onto these bits because this is where you are going to connect in and as it shows on step 18 it's about selecting where it's going to go so it you know put your Jemima into position you know move the head decide exactly how you want her to be um, in my case here I had her quite upright and then came down and so put the legs there so if I looking at my little girl here it's we're talking there okay Ooh, whoops nearly dropped her on the floor um so i have a quite upright you know i can, you can bend the little head down and it would be here so it's a case of cutting there and then putting them in and adding more wool over the top the reason why i cut is because you know you've got a nice lot of wool there and it's still quite spongy and it just gives you that nice um and it also teaches you that it's fine to cut and then cover up and the amount of times that you know i've made mistakes and ripped things off or cut them off it's all good um so yeah just a pair of scissors cut your little um line through there place your feet in and then if you think oh they're too wide you can easily if you think oh you know they're too wide for the jemima that you've made you can easily just sort of like bend it in a bit so that you've actually got a bit of a triangle if you want to just to make the gap between them not quite so much um and i i'm sure that when i have her standing i have her little feet slightly outwards anyway but yeah so play around with that um, and the size that you've created because they'll all be different and it'll be different every time you do it um, and then when you've got it in place you can felt the bit which is there together and then add some more white wool to actually keep it in place and then you can from then on you can start actually balancing 
her and everything you do, you can put it down again and have a look and see if it all looks good. Okay, so just to briefly look at the beak, it's worth um, saying this is the piece where I would actually spend some time um, getting the shapes and everything that you want. Because always in any creation, the face, the eyes um, are always the bit that you focus on. Yes, you look at the other little bits as well, but only once you're convinced by the um, by the face. So I would say, you know, the previous steps where you were actually just shaping the head, um, spend some time getting that, you know, not rock solid, but solid enough so that you can put your eyes in and shape. So get that so that you've got that nice little um, diamond shape on top. Um, we're obviously going to do the beak and everything now, but just be happy with that overall shape before you get into this next step. Then I've just very roughly added some yellow to that bottom. So this is going to be the bottom part of the beak. Then felt yourself that nice little curved triangle with lots of um, loose fluff outside. Um, well, you know, it's 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 thickish, um, but I've done I've used my hand press as I call it to flatten that down rather than an iron because I don't want it flat flat as if I was doing an ear because I still need to be able to felt this in place. So I just flatten it by rubbing with my hand over. Okay. And then, you know, as say, so use the pins to place, place it in. But just if you put it over and think, oh no, I've, I've actually got the sizing, you know, wrong, get, then go back and, you know, if you need to make this a bit smaller, just get your needle and protect your fingers with a um, business card either side if you want to. And just, you know, felt the sides in a bit. So, um, or even, you know, if it's thin enough, pull it in the centre and then go back and actually decide, yes, that's where I want it to go. You will have, as I've suggested in 27, is just created a little line of the yellow around where you want it to go so that when you've got this on and around and pinned in, that's where you're actually going to felt it into. Okay, and just, it's always nice to still be able to see that bit underneath which you will emphasize with a black line anyway but yeah just take your time with it bearing in mind you know if you put it on felting it in place and don't like it you can take it off yeah or you know if you've gone too far with the yellow you can cover it over um there's never you've never gone too far okay so enjoy that step because definitely Jemima starts to um, come alive and then with your two little pins where the um, it's, like, it's like nostrils isn't it where they breathe through um, in the top there and add the little line around okay before then finally doing your little dots for your slit of your black and then adding the little black eyes now I don't glue those in I tend to just leave it, but if you prefer to glue them in, then glue them in. That's just a personal preference of mine. Okay. Lovely. Right. So I shall leave you to that. And then we come on to the sort of clothing and the fringe, because whilst the bonnet very much makes that final little piece for the head, it is her shawl that we all know Jemima for. And this lovely little fringed edge, okay? And so in step 35 and 36, they show the shapes where you're creating this shape, this side and the other side, and then you're creating the little shape underneath to go under here. And you're going to add those on as shapes once you've added your fringe and then start to add the little ripples and we'll talk about that in a minute but the fringe part is lovely because you need to do sort of equal amounts of the light and the um I think this is salmon pink i think but anyway the um the, the stronger 
pink, let's just call it. Okay, and it really is a case of just making nice, long, thin. And this, on this occasion, we are going to make it string-like. Okay, and then two and we decide that's actually going to be thin enough. We can just take it in our hand. Now, a little um, tip here is I actually put hand lotion on before doing this. Okay. Find a lovely one so you've got a really nice smell while you're doing it. Okay. And then just lightly doesn't have to be lightly actually but just roll in your hands so that you've got a nice string strip if you think oh that's that's too thick you can still pull it out you know be careful easing it and then you can roll again now do several strips obviously in the light and the strong pink and then you're going to just tie little knots um, about two centimeters in between each knot okay and so that really is just um, an overhand knot as we call them through tie yeah, it doesn't have to be as tight as a tight thing but just so that it creates that little knot of the fringe okay so when you cut this, you want to have a little bit of fringe above because that's the bit that you're going to felt into the shawl. So that's why we say give yourself a two centimetre gap at least. But, you know, if you have too much of a gap, it's not a problem. What you don't want is too small a gap. There we go. And tie it again. So nice and easy, and then she says, hunting for the scissors that she put out earlier on, but now I can't find. Where did I pop those? <laughs> okay, so we're going to just chop a little bit of a fringe. Obviously that's too long that side, but chop a little bit and you'll have lots of these now on my top one they're longer than on my bottom one so the ones that you've done where you think oh yes that's a that's a bit short doesn't matter you can put those on your bottom one and it just makes a really lovely effect Here we go. when we go around to step 38 when you're actually taking those little pieces and just felting them onto the edge of those shapes that you've created there. And once you've actually felted them on, you can add some more of the really light wall over the top to make it nice and strong. You'll be able to see how much colour comes through or doesn't or if you need to actually strengthen it up or not but it just gives that really lovely lovely effect so it's quite i found it quite a fun stage to do and to create that beautiful shawl and um, say you put the small one on first and then the big one over the top always pin them in place first after of course having got your little um, tail feathers there makes that nice little effect down the back Okay, and then we're over here, right, when we get to doing the, the ripples, as I shall call it. Okay, so the ripples, I love all these extra pictures which are in there as well. So the ripples, as you can see, you start from, you sort of decide, drape, it's like draping, you know, almost like being a fashion designer. Let's just take your little um, bonnet off there, my darling. There we go, pop over there. So it's like um, draping it, you know, taking a length 
of your pink that you've got and you know draping it round the neck and just seeing exactly where you want it to come to um, and so normally you know when we wear things it's at the top there isn't it and it comes down so I kind of pinpointed that's where my little bow is going to be or not as it were and so just started adding the ripples going down and then another little ripple for the just where the, the side bits attach on just gives that nice sort of more fabricy doesn't it and then you can fill in with the pinks in between and if you want to I mean you can even create a shadow in those creases just to emphasize them and then of course you have the little paisley um, detail to do on top which if I just lay you down there okay so that lovely little paisley detail on number 47 so which is basically an exclamation well and done a speech mark an old-fashioned speech mark so I'll just show you on here how I did them so I just got a nice thin piece to flounce it up a bit so that it was even okay so I've got a little ball and then I sort of created a tear drop as it were so that I got a tail out the top and then I laid it on my pink and just turned the tail just turned the tail a bit tear drop turn the tail and then felted that in place very very lightly as if it was like a 2d picture really really lightly done light needle you're not going all the way in you're literally just adding it to that fabric on the top but the shape little teardrop and then turn that top so it's just slightly curved that way and off you go so our little bonnet basically it's all made out of your um, felted wool we don't cut felt for this um, only because we wanted it still to be sort of flimsy-ish and very sort of stretchable and movable I just think it has the nicest look that it actually has that colour and effect all over um, and it is just about creating the shapes which we have got the templates for at the back you've got the shape for the actual bonnet bit and the back so the back shading bit here is just to show that the overall size is that but this angles down so that it comes down to a smaller bit at the back so that insert is the size of the smaller so that's how small you need to bring it down to okay because when you have it on the bonnet here it's the bigger bit out here and then it narrows down into the smaller into the smaller the back of the head is the small piece which you know attaches on okay and i suppose it's worth um mentioning here with the picture of 40 8 hour that when you're creating any of these shapes you lay your wool out on the mat and felt into the line and then fold the wool in over the line and that gives you a nice sharpish line that you can then obviously pick up off the mat and you can neaten um, if you find it's too thick again then I would suggest the hand press rather than the iron because we don't want it to be like really flat felt we still want it to be um, nice and flimsy like a bonnet rather than a you know solid piece um, yeah so that's that just gives you your nice sharpish edge as you go um, 
I think all of the um, instructions there explain it all the way through that here you're making this piece just a little bit too big so that when you fit it on you gather it up slightly and just give that little bonnety effect and then you've got your really thin piece that you've rubbed in your hands nice and tightly and then you come on to the very final bit which uh, as I mentioned at the start with regards to the toes you don't have to do this but you can get your and in fact, I think on one of these I've done it, I had clipped it, can you see that? I'd clipped it and pulled it out and then it ended up being too long because you can imagine if you pull that out it'd be really quite long and I clipped it off. But that's a personal preference for you, whichever way you prefer to have your piece. And then, you know, it's all about the making it yours. Because everyone that we do, everyone that I do is different. You know, I've got this one here as a sample, which will be slightly different to the one which is pictured on the box. But, you know, they all have their own little characters. And say bonnet on, bonnet off. I, I like the idea of the bonnet being an accessory which comes off. Um, so you can dress her accordingly. The shawl is always on. <laughs> yeah, there she is. So yeah, the shawl is always on. So I really hope um, you enjoy making Jemima. As I say, I've, I've um, assumed a certain amount of knowledge. So I haven't gone into huge details about how to do general felting. Um, I just thought it was worth coming on and mentioning a couple of pieces in case it was good to see the video and um, see those little pieces done. And also to say that if you actually need any more help, if you're a bit more of a beginner and you need a little bit more help, then please shout and I can either send you to the right video already done or actually come on and do a little video for you. But um, either way, I really look forward to seeing your Jemimas. And so please, you know, put them up on the uh, Tutix tips and tutorials as well as the um, Crafty Kit Club's Crafty Way to Happiness. Um, really, really love to see how you've interpreted the design. So, see you again. <laughs>